Hello. This is a follow-up to my previous WireGuard video, where I showed you how to easily self-host an anonymous VPN. Before moving forward, I strongly advise you to watch that first. Because today, I am going to show you how to obfuscate your WireGuard traffic. In the first video, you saw how trivial it is, to identify WireGuard UDP packets. Any network administrator, or automated networking management tool, will be able to block you from accessing specific servers or even whole networks, if they so choose. This is not a thought experiment. It is an increasingly common occurrence. I am going to make my WireGuard traffic, look like regular HTTPS web traffic. By tunneling it over a secure WebSockets connection. Doing this, is surprisingly easy. And very useful. Let's go. Let us remind ourselves, what the issue with WireGuard is. This is my local PC, running the WireGuard client. The WireGuard peer that redirects my traffic, is hosted on a VPS in Iceland. This is its public IP. I will SSH into it. Standard Server Configuration As you can see, the VPN is up and running. Ok. I will log out from the server, and take a look at the traffic on my external network interface. WireGuard UDP Packets if you want to look at this data in a pretty GUI environment, you can install, Wireshark. Click on the capture icon, and select your network interface. It is obvious to anyone who cares to look, that I am using a VPN. Yes, my traffic is encrypted and its source obfuscated, but it can be blocked precisely for that reason. So let's fix this. I will stop WireGuard here in the client. And let's start with the server configuration. The server side is very easy to set up. Search for, WS Tunnel. Download the latest release of the binary file for Linux. Save it. In user local bin. First, rename the file as WS Tunnel. Second, change its permissions so anyone can run it. And third, you need to assign a particular capability to the file. Here's what this means. This program is going to bind a WebSocket to port 443. A privileged port. If you want to allow any user other than root to be able to do that, you need to assign a capability to the file. The command, get, cap, will display a file's capabilities. With the command, set, cap, you can add the full capability that we need. Capnet bind service. By the way, if you don't have these commands, install the libcap2 package. And we're pretty much done. Create a service so WS Tunnel starts on boot. These two options define the behavior of the WebSocket server. It listens to any IP address, on port 443. And accepts traffic to be forwarded only to the WireGuard Tunnel. Start and enable the service. The last step, is to add a new firewall rule. Allow incoming connections to port 443.
Now we move on, to configure the client. But first I will restart the server, to make sure that my setup persists properly across sessions. Install WS Tunnel into user local bin. Rename the file, and change its permissions. No need to assign any special capabilities. The client side of the WebSockets connection is a little more complicated to set up. Luckily, there's a GitHub repo that provides a script that will deal with all this complexity for us. Search for, WireGuard over WSS. We need to download, this script and its associated configuration file. Save them next to your WireGuard config file. Start by renaming the config file you just downloaded to reflect the name of your WireGuard interface. Mine is WG0. Now we need to edit the WireGuard configuration file. Go back to the WireGuard over WSS GitHub page. By the way, in this video I'm just following these instructions. I will link it in the description. Anyway, scroll down, and here you have it. First, modify the endpoint directive. And second, add these lines to the interface section. Notice that the WireGuard process itself will call these functions from within the bash script we downloaded. So in the client, we don't have to manage other processes or service files. Everything will start and stop automatically, including the WS tunnel binary file, as we start and stop WireGuard. This WS Tunnel Bash script will take care of everything. Well, almost everything. There's a catch. Let me explain. We'll actually have to tweak both files. The script that will manage the bringing up and down of the WebSockets connection, and its configuration file. Why? Because the script expects the VPN server to have a domain name. If yours does, great. Just edit the first line in the configuration file, and you're good to go. I will leave a link in the description section below, where you can see me get a domain name for a server, for free. It is really not a big deal, and you can get it done in a few minutes. Instead, I'm going to show you how to fix this, even faster. Without having to bother with DNS records and SSL certificates. The thing is, that if I set the remote host variable with my server's IP address, the script will exit with an error. It needs a working domain name. But my server doesn't have one. I only have its IP. No domain name. So I will use the IP address anyway and fix the script. I won't be using this variable. Open the script, and scroll down. The problem lies in this function. The local variable, remote, is set straight from the config file. Since the script is expecting a domain name, it tries to get its IP with the dig command. Let's try that. domain name? No problem. If you provide an IP address to the command dig, it returns an empty string, which will prove this conditional statement true, and exit the script. I'll fix this, by deleting this whole if statement, and setting the remote IP variable to the IP address I provided in the config file. And we are finished. I'll start WireGuard. It 
it works. Let's look at my traffic now. No Y regard UDP packets. Just TCP and HTTP over TLS regular web traffic. Okay. One last fix. You might notice that some websites take an unusually long time to load. And others won't even load at all. This issue is caused by the fragmentation of WireGuard UDP packets, due to overhead from the TCP layer that we have added on top. A simple fix, is to reduce the maximum transmission unit, or MTU, in the client's WireGuard interface. WireGuard's default MTU value, is 1420. I will lower it to 1300, editing the configuration file. I will leave some links in the description, so you can learn more about the issue. You can get wildly different results with minor adjustments. So take this last step seriously, and you will end up with way better bandwidth. You don't have to route all your traffic like this. You can have multiple WireGuard interfaces in your client PC, pointing to different VPSs with different routing policies and configuration files. For example, a server with web sockets tunneling, and another without. They could be in different jurisdictions, for maximum versatility. I have noticed a recent increase in servers and networks, both public and private, heavily filtering and restricting incoming traffic from VPNs. A well-known third-party VPN provider is often a dead end. Those IP ranges are very well known and you won't be able to access many websites. But sometimes, going the self-hosting route, is not enough either. And you need to hide your VPN traffic, as I've shown here today. On top of all this, your server's physical location might also get you blocked. Let me tell you. I've had to deal with all these scenarios recently, just by browsing through the internet. Nothing fancy. So having a few cheap VPSs in different jurisdictions, including the one you live in, is a good idea. If you can afford it. Until next time.